I would just like to say, first of all, to the gentleman and the lady of the dais, David, I want to thank you for chipping in and getting a buck and a half sports shirt and making a whole outfit out of it. <laughs> I've never seen a Jewish clown up close. <laughs> I want to thank the wonderful black folks on the dais. I, <laughs> All you guys here having a good time, and the train of Baltimore has nobody to serve lunch. <laughs> see, see, see if Muhammad's laughing. If Muhammad ain't laughing, go into glory, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> I kid about people, that is my reputation. That is why I'm here tonight, because we're entertaining a big joke. <laughs> oh, my time out, Cleveland. <laughs> Muhammad, I heard your speech, and I say publicly and honestly, you were a great champion. You've had some great fights. The Joe Frazier fight, the Kenny Norton fight, you and I know, you took a dive. <laughs> Angelo Dundee, his trainer went, lay down, your mother, lay down. Don Meredith, who is dumber than Muhammad, is explaining it. <laughs> Don Meredith is making friends with Muhammad Ali, and he lives in the heart of Texas going, uh, let's get him, you know. <laughs> let's get Muhammad and have a cookout. <laughs> I kid you. Black or white, it doesn't matter to me. We're all human beings. Why do you keep talking about it, dude? <laughs> I want to thank you, Muhammad, for butting in while I was talking. I hope your hair gets kinky again. Had a boy, Howard. Show your class. Smell the tape. I can say from the bottom of my heart, I've known you uh, quite a few years. I've watched you bring the Monday night football games. In fact, the wife and I, when we fool around, we watch you. <laughs> I'll put it another way, Howard. You're a dull guy. Uh, I do want to say, though, Roosevelt Greer, one of the great champions here, Don and you. Roosevelt Greer played with the New York Giants, I believe, in 1906. <laughs> and they didn't wear helmets. They just ran into the wall and went in. <laughs> That's why they say some of the black people are slow. <laughs> That's only a joke, Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad, mifine machane machane, which means I hope your snake dies. <laughs> Is this too fast for you, Father? <laughs> we have a priest in the audience going, where are we, Alice? <laughs> and he's married. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I assume you're a reverend. Is that correct, sir? Good. Just nod your head if you hear anything. <laughs> Getting back to you, Howard, and that is difficult. There is a new thing out, Howard, which you probably haven't heard about. It's called cologne. <laughs> I've been sitting next to you for about an hour now, and for about half of it, I thought it was me. There's a new thing out called soap and a hot tub, Howard. You're gonna go mildew, Howard, if you don't wash up for this thing. See that tooth, the glue hardens and makes your brain go soft. <laughs> and you are Jewish, because with that nose, if you ain't, you're a falcon on the loose. I'll tell you. <laughs> this is why this man has to be put in a home. <laughs> put him in a home before he hurts your child. <laughs> this is a weirdo, folks. He's the kind of guy that hangs around the alley going, Psst, fella. <laughs> But I, I kid you, and why do I kid you? Because you're dumb and annoying. <laughs> you're
you're a Jewish man and I'm a Jewish man, and I say from my heart... Don't tell me your troubles. Ah, uh, I don't tell you your troubles. I quote the words of a great rabbi, Rabbi Eli Alekiva, who said, Let the life of thyself, Howard, bring thy life to thee. With thy faith, I felt. <laughs> this jerk understands it. And he's sitting here like a yo-yo going, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Later on, David, you're going to do your wonderful <clears throat> Hanukkah poem. <laughs> <laughs> Roosevelt's rear window. Hey, what, what is that, a uh, Hanukkah? <laughs> some sort of festival their mothers have? <laughs> <laughs> but to all of you folks in the room, uh, at the end of this evening, this entire room will be sprayed. <laughs> How it does give off some sort of rare fungus. <laughs> He's the only guy that goes to a health club and people say, put the towel on. <laughs> you like that, huh, Bill? He's got that kind of body. <laughs> I've seen you in the nude, Howard, and I say this from my heart. Become a girl. <laughs> <laughs> the reverend just went, is that funny, Alice? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here for the money I'm getting, folks. I'm a hit. No, I was outside uh, helping the wonderful Chinese kid going, You got a car? <laughs> I said, Yeah, and he parked it, and I came in and kill an hour here. <laughs> but good luck to you, Howard. From the bottom of my heart and to all of you, uh, remember, love sports, love the game. The late, great Newt Rockne said, if you hit him hard, you hit him soft. Hit him hard and hard and soft. <laughs> <laughs> to you, Howard, really, I wish you what I have. A little gas right over here. <laughs> About five o'clock in the morning, just when you and Em are going to make a move. <laughs> As you're laying in bed, and Em goes, Howard, and you go... <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of my family, I wish you what I have all the good things in life, and may you be blessed with following and fans as you have in the past and in the present. You are indeed a gentleman and a guy with class, because a turnout like this does not come just for people to kill an evening. It comes from a man who's important. Thank you for making me feel a little important by being one of your guests this evening. Bless you and good luck.